Welcome to the webinar on PLS Grid. I am Otto Lynch, VP of Bentley Systems and Head of Powerline Systems. Our focus today will be on grid-wide analytics. With our engineering-based digital twin, we will be covering how you can know the structural and environmental performance of your grid for increased reliability and resilience using PLS Grid. For those of you not familiar with Powerline Systems, Dr. Alan Perot founded PLS in 1984. While a professor of civil and structural engineering at the University of Wisconsin in Madison, Dr. Perot developed one of the first, if not the first, software programs for the design and analysis of lattice steel transmission towers in the early 1970s. <clears throat> he also became very involved in the overhead transmission line industry, where he investigated many transmission line failures and became an expert in the industry. Dr. Perot was very active in ASCE and CGRADE, where he participated in the developments of many codes and standards, and he is well known today as one of the industry leaders around the world. I am very fortunate to have worked with Dr. Perot and learned many things from him. Over the decades, Tower has become known as the premier lattice steel transmission tower software in the world, meeting nearly every code in every country. In addition to further developing our tower application, PLS continued to develop other software programs for the industry. One program is PLS Pole, which does the analysis and design of pole structures utilizing wood, tubular steel, concrete, laminated wood, FRP or fiberglass, and even emergency restoration structure or mast. <clears throat> In addition to the above ground infrastructure, Caisson was developed for the design and analysis of concrete drill pier foundations, as well as direct embedded pole structures. The flagship of PLS is, of course, PLS CAD, Power Line Systems Computer Aided Design and Drafting. Dr. Perot had the vision from the beginning to do a 3D overhead line program that did everything from survey data integration, terrain development, structure modeling, conductor wire sagging and tensioning, line analytics such as clearances under changing sags and blowout conditions, structure usages, vegetation analysis, bill of material development, automated plan and profile drawing generation, staking tables, stringy charts, and many other features that were needed to design, analyze, and construct an overhead line from the beginning of the process to the end of the process. As a result, PLS developed the first true digital twin of overhead power lines back in the 1990s well before John Vickers of NASA even coined the term in 2010. Along the way, of course, many new technologies and methods became available. While I was at a large consultant in the earlier 90s before joining PLS, I had the opportunity to be the first person to use LiDAR on overhead lines. I was working almost daily with the PLS team to bring this capability into PLS cab. Of course, today, many companies are capturing LiDAR with UAVs, drones, and all that data can be integrated with PLS CAB. Another major accomplishment for PLS was the development of finite element structural engineering for overhead lines. These methods provided a much more accurate calculation of conductor sags and tensions than the traditional used ruling span method. To my knowledge, we are the only software application in the world today that can accurately predict the sags, blowouts, and tensions of conductors using these finite element methods for wind, ice, and temperature changes. This is extremely important for the calculation of proper clearances under the maximum operating temperature conditions, blowout conditions of conductors for proper vegetation and falling tree violations, <clears throat> of course, we've continued to expand our software beyond just civil and structural capabilities as we have incorporated many electrical capabilities such as EMF, space potentials, line constants, lightning protection, and other electrical functions often used in overhead line designs. We are also leading the way on real-time rating and FERC Rule 881 compliances. As a result of these efforts over the past 30 plus years, PLS grown, has grown to be used by over 1,800 companies in over 130 countries around the world. We have become known as the industry standard in the international overhead line design and analysis. In the US, in Europe, and in the world. 
Of the 1,800 companies that use our software in over 130 countries, 10 of the 10 largest utilities in the world use PLSCAD, and 25 of the 25 largest utilities in the U.S. use PLSCAD. However, as good as we are, we realize that we had a weakness. That was the fact that everything we did was project-based. If someone desired to do a global analysis of, say, a wind event or a vegetation analysis, it involved opening up each PLSCAD project and running each report separately. There was also the project management and version control to deal with as well. As a result, we developed PLS Grid a few years ago. Brandon will be covering all of this shortly. Before I hand this over to Brandon, I did want to clarify that PLS Grid is much more than just a GIS-based informational map like many other digital twins are. PLS Grid is an engineering-based true digital twin of your grid. If you are experiencing a storm event, we can tell you where the first structure in your entire grid will fail. If you are experiencing a fire danger, we can tell you where those highest dangers are for the vegetation for a given wind, wind direction, and temperatures. Put your engineering hat on now as I hand this over to Brandon to share with you the full capabilities of PLS Grid. Hello, everyone. And thank you for taking the time today to learn about our latest software offering from Powerline Systems, PLS Grid. My name is Brandon Grillon. I'm the Director of Technical Support at Powerline Systems. I've been working in the utility industry for about 30 years now in the routing, design, construction, and maintenance of overhead lines. Last 14 or so years, I've been with Powerline Systems helping with technical support and sales. Um, I'm going to kind of go over PLS Grid with you on this and kind of show you how you can use it with PLS CAD. Uh, PLS Grid is a very powerful uh, addition to your PLS CAD projects. Uh, if you want to kind of get some information about it that's already on our website, you can always visit our products page, go to PLS Grid. You got a lot of information in here about uh, PLS Grid and how it goes, but one of my favorite ones in here is a graphic about PLS Grid. I think it kind of helps uh, show you what what it does. And it's right here, it's kind of there's three parts with PLS Grid. There's the PLS Grid server, the PLS Grid desktop, and the PLS Grid web. So what PLS Grid is going to be able to do is it's going to take all those decades of PLS CAD projects that you have, PLS pole models, tower models, that's been built up over all these years, and it's going to allow you to organize all those. That's what the PLS Grid server does. So if you look up here at the top of this graphic, you can see all these different things that go in here. All the different files that are attached to your project, everything can be put in the PLS Grid server. It will then go in, organize, and get everything together so it's easily readable in either a desktop. Down here you can see we got our little desktop or on the web. So you can go in and, and do a web with your tablet, your phone, anything that has a web browser, you'll be able to access that data. So I kind of like this figure quite a bit. But the big thing about PLS Grid is it provides you a secure and efficient repository to store all your data, so all your PLS project stuff. It's all on your server. It's not up in the cloud. It gives you organization and standardization of your project files. It gives you the ability to use an access control list, so you control who is able to access your data, whether it's on the web or whether it's on your PLS Grid desktop. Uh, it also is going to track changes, so you get your change management with check-in and check-out and automatic revision tracking. What that does is allows you to track every change to a project over time. As you do that, you're going to be able to see historically what how things changed and, and everything on your project, if it's an archive project. You're also on new designs. You're going to be able to go back and forth to older revisions in case you make some changes and you need to go back. It's, it's as simple as a few mouse clicks and you're getting back. It's also going to keep all of this in PLS Grid on your server so you no longer have to do backups for each iteration of a project. Um, and it's also going to efficiently store that through data deduplication. I'll go through all of these items and kind of show you how this goes here in a few minutes with PLS CAD and everything. Uh, so first things first, PLS Grid, we're going to start with the desktop client. So I'm going to come down here, I'm going to launch PLS CAD. 
It's going to pop up. You get your license dialog that you normally see. Now when I hit OK, we get our normal project wizard, which is opening new projects and such. But if you look in the background, we're now loading a base map behind that. So in that base map, I can go in and look at those projects. So I'm just going to OK out of this. I've not opened any projects yet. I've got a base map, information. You'll notice already up in the upper right, I've got information as my mouse is bouncing around. You'll see that there is a key down at the bottom giving you the legend for the, the different voltages of your lines. I'm going to kind of zoom in a little bit here so we can see the projects a little further. So these are projects that are actually been loaded onto the PLS Grid server. Now these projects, real easy to add a project in the PLS Grid. All you have to do, if you've got a project open, you go to File, PLS Grid, and there's going to be an Add Project in here. If you have a backup, for example, you've got all of your, your archive files in a backup, you can do an Import Backup. You don't have to open the backup, don't have to restore it, you just go Import Backup, and it's automatically going to go in, it's going to organize all the files for you, it's going to put it in the right directories for you on the server. So once you load it in, we take control of all file management. We track all changes. So this is a pretty powerful feature here. So this, this particular PLS grid is kind of an example one that we use. So as I go in through here, you can see I'm bouncing around. We've got several projects. The little pink box is actually showing you the project extents. And if you look up at the right there, as I move around, there's different information about these projects. All this information can all be customized to your particular needs. So if you want to see certain things, you can. Like this one has a right-of-way width on it of 80 feet. As the voltage, which is the main voltage for that line. Line name, project name. If I move down here, I have even more because this project was set up with some different features. So you see that. Now, as I scroll in, get a little bit more data. You see a little bit more. I'm going to keep on scrolling so you can see. We got structure locations. You see the spans. You can tell the spans are color coded. You can see the yellow compared to the bottom is 69 kV. The blues are 24.1, 24 kV. So you see that. Now I can click on this. I'm not going to do it yet because I want to show a little bit more. I can go straight in and open that CAD project if I want. I can go in and and actually go in and get the KML or KMZ file if I want to open it in Google Earth. Easy enough to do. I just click right there. This KMZ is already. Notice I'm not in PLS CAD. Just want to show you that. I'm just going in and, and uh, bringing up Google Earth. So I'm going to move this on up so we can see it. As you can see it's going ahead. It's bringing everything in there. So real easy. If a person did want to see the 3D rendering of their project, Google Earth has all that available right there. So I can go in and, and view that in Google Earth if I want it. So that's all available. Again, not opening any PLS CAD projects. I'm just going to go ahead and close that. I can also go in, click here, and if I wanted to do a um, grid, um, go to location and maps, I can use that. But as I go in here on there, I get a little bit more data. You see I have structure information in here. So as I bounce around, you can see in the upper right hand corner, I got information about the structures. As I go over to the spans, and if my mouse clicks to a span, you see I get information up there. There's my span length, and that's both types of conductors. This has a Drake conductor and a seven number eight aluma weld on there for its ground wire. Other things that are available. If I go over to this project here, let's say I've got this structure. I'm curious about usage. I can come in here and I can just go in and look at the open structure overview report. Click on that. Here's all that information about that structure. All the analysis that has occurred on that structure. You get a nice little view. All this is customizable as well. You can even put pictures into this overview report if you want. So all that's also available again. Not open any PLS CAD project. This is just available by me opening and viewing this information. Other things that are available. If I come in here, I can click on this structure. And I happen to know this one has some pictures related to it. So I can come down and say, oh, there's some structure reference files. Come down, click on that. 
here's a photo that's been associated with that structure. So that's available to view. All right, now we're gonna go in a little further. Let's look at some more stuff that's available when we quick click on this. PMP sheets, click right there. I can look at the PMP sheets. Goes in, opens that up automatically for you. All right. Now, as we go around too, you can see we got projects inside of projects. This one in particular here, this was a, uh, a windmill. This is actually a, a PLS CAD light model that we put together, but I can click on that. And let's say it's a project reference file that's been added into the reference manager in there. I can go in there, like this is a windmill. I want building instructions on how to do that. It's a big kind of a way to share your construction documents and stuff. If you have those in your project reference files, you, you can easily access it. Here's our nice Lego windmill. So kind of fun there. All that information available just at a click of a mouse there. All right. Now as we go through, you'll see some of these are kind of candy striped. When they're candy striped like that, you see this is blue and yellow. That's a double circuit line. It's a 69 with some with some distribution under build underneath there. So you've got that information. Okay. So this is kind of the view. This is what you get. You got all this information on the desktop. And you're like, okay, that's great. So what do we do with this? Well, there's a couple things. First of all, I don't have to go searching for where to open a file and everything. I can just come in pick that and say get latest revision now before I do that I do want to show you something down here I have a workspace so this workspace is a spot on on anywhere you want it can be on your hard drive it can be on a network drive but this is your personal workspace so all the project data still resides on the server that's great so but when I want to work on it what I do is I'm gonna go up from the server and I'm going to download a copy of this onto our uh, onto this workspace so on this particular project I'm gonna click right here I'm gonna say get latest revision and it's gonna go through successfully retrieve revision 25 at my my particular workspace that I've defined and then it says would I like to open it I'm not gonna do that right now I will in a minute I'm going to show you first where this workspace is defined. If I go to File Preferences, you can see right here, Project Workspace Directory. I just made mine C Workspace. Now this is for the individual user. This is where they go in and actually they're going to download that file. Now what the beauty of this is, is that file is still up on the server. Nothing's changed there. So we're just downloading a copy of that. And when we do that on that workspace, this is where that data deduplication comes into play. So if I come into that workspace, you saw how fast I was able to get that project before. So I'm going to go back into my workspace. And I've got these in here. I'm going to go and just here. This is a user guide example. And I'm just going to delete that. So it's in my workspace. I'm just going to go in and delete it. I'll keep this up. Come down. Click in here and I'm going to say get latest revision. And I go to my workspace. You can see just it's putting that user guide example on there. You can see it's downloading and it told me it successfully retrieved that. So you took that, that took just a couple seconds, you know, and not too bad. But let's see what happens. This is already in my workspace. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to open it. I'm just going to re download it again. Right here, get latest revision, successfully retrieved it that fast. So what this is doing is it's doing that data deduplication that we talked about. I went ahead and opened this project so we can see it. But that data deduplication, we're looking at all the files that were on the server. We're comparing to the ones on your workspace. If nothing changed between those, we're keeping track of those so we don't download every file. If only one file had changed, let's say maybe you had changed the uh, a photograph or something that was in there or something. It's only going to download the stuff that changed between that project. Now it also works the other way. When I go in and check in and check out this, when I check it back in, it's going to upload my changes into the um, onto the server. We're also checking to see if that files are the same between that. If they are, great. We only move the minimum amount to do that. 
this is how we're able to keep those revision tracking and keep all revisions made because really we don't need to store big files your aerial photography this like and this model here in here we don't need to keep multiple copies of that for revisions this is not this it doesn't really change probably now if it does change we'll keep track of that and we'll store one copy of whatever the change was and we'll continue down that path well the majority of file size is normally 10 models your XYZ point data and, and imagery or vector drawings well if those don't change a lot it makes it very quick to go back and forth between the server and your workspace so it's a that data to data deduplication is a very powerful tool you got to say it three times fast to be able to use it too so that's the difficult part <laughs> well okay so we got this I'm gonna go ahead and close this project because I also want to show you now how this works as far as downloading and everything so what how are we going to get this and use the project and I want to show you how we're going to track those changes and everything so as we go in here, I'm going to go in. I'm, I like this project. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to download that one. So get latest revision. Successfully retrieved. You saw that was very fast. Would you like to open it? Yes, I would. It's a little warning about side profiles. That's okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to continue to display those. I'll just go ahead and turn that off. And then if we look here, now we've got our project. You can see this one's got some LiDAR data in it and everything. So, you know, you kind of get a view of everything in here. And now let's go up and let's look up at the top up here. And we got some PLS tools in here. I'm not going to check this out. All I did right now is just download a copy. So when I downloaded that copy, great. I've got it on my workspace. And now if I hit this checkout button, it is actually going to lock that file and say that it is only I that can make any changes or upload until I check it back in. Now, right here, this is our project discovery. Now, I'm going to click in here because this is a really cool tool. So, I'm coming through here. This has got my project manager discovery. This has got a list of every project that I've got on my server. And in here, I can, I've got search capabilities. Maybe I don't want to use the graphics to find it. Maybe I want to find that Verona project. I can hit find projects. There's two of them with Verona in there. So gives you a way to do that. So I'm going to go back to our full one here. But now you can see in here, I also have some latest outdated and workspace conflict. So what's good, what this is, is I have, when it's blue on here, that means I have that downloaded. Remember, I got that Verona supplemental example line. I downloaded it, user guide. So it's showing me which ones are in my workspace. There's that windmill one that I downloaded. So all that's in there. If I've got a copy on my workspace and it's out of date, that means it's different than the one that resides on the server. I'm going to get this outdated. And then it's going to be, if I need to go and get that down, I just download it. It's available. Workspace conflict means that you got some sort of difference in there, so you're going to have to address that. So you get a little bit of color coding in there. Okay, now what I want to show is the next thing over here is this project reviewer. Now what the project reviewer does is I come in here and click on it. This gives me the information about that project. So this is the one I have open. I'm doing a project reviewer of it. I uh, see right here, I have 25 different revisions. I can go in and click on any one of them. I get a comment about what happened. I get a little project preview of what that looks like. I get who made those, those changes. So if I come down through here, let's go to 23. Uh, my colleague Kevin, he went in and he added Dane County LiDAR to this project. So we know that Dane County LiDAR is in there. That's what he did with that revision. I can go through and do this all the way through and track everything. Here's one I did and I moved structure 20. Now it says move structure 20. Well, here's my automatic revision tracking. It's telling me exactly what I did. So I took structure 20. It was at station 5210.168 and it went to 5198. So all this gets automatically put in there. Now also with this project reviewer, 
I have all the files listed here. So here's every structure file. Here's all the component libraries for this. So this would be like the stuff in your PLS PO or tower models. Uh, if I have any load files like LCA files, you'll see those are also included. Uh, cables. This tells me what my different cables are. There's that seven number eight Lumawell. There's my Drake. Down here below that, references. These are all those images that are in that project. So you can see those. Attachments in here. Now, the other thing, project files. These are all those ones that when you save a PLS CAD project, you get your DOM file, your criteria file and such. That's all right here. So you've got that all available. You can see and view that stuff. Now, here's where it gets really cool. Okay, we know I've got this one project open right now, the Verona Supplemental. Now, I'm going to go in, I'm going to go to my cables. Okay, I'm going to say 7 number 8 Lumaweb. Right here, projects that use that selected file. So these are all the projects that use 7 number 8 Lumaweb and that tells you which ones they are. Now, where this becomes very powerful is let's say I need to update everything on my, on my grid system. Maybe I decide that I want to add some electrical properties to my wire files so that I can perform some uh, line constant evaluation, something like that. I can go in, update those, and then come over and select which ones that, that have this and use the batch update feature to push that to all my projects. I don't have to open up each one of them, redo all that stuff. All I have to do is change it in one and then push it to every other one. So this is very, very powerful if you have to make changes to your grid as a whole. All right. Uh, other things down here, you can get a report with the changes. Pretty much it's going to show this. But this also, this report, later on we'll kind of talk about this when I get to the web client. We can get reports submitted daily, weekly, monthly, however you want it, sent to certain uh, supervisors if you want, project managers, so that they will get a report of everything that was worked on, all the changes that were made to that project during that time frame. So you, you have that option as well. Uh, in here is uh, you, we can uh, go in and, and get this revision. So I'm going to actually come in and we've already got this downloaded. So I'm going to kind of walk you through one, me checking it out, making a simple change, show you how that change gets populated through so we can see how that works. So right up here, checking out the project. Right here, it says it checks out, it says I've got it checked out. If we go back in here, you'll see there's that Verona supplemental and right here, I've got it checked out. So we can, we can see who has things checked out too. We can see if I need to get access or someone else that I work with needs to have access to that project, they can go in, grab that, and and call you and say, hey, I need that project. Or you can you know, ask for it to be released, check back in. There's also a facility if someone did check it out, maybe they left, maybe they went on vacation, you still had to do that. There is an admin portal on the web. We'll kind of talk about that a little bit. But that admin portal allows you to release that. But you have to be an admin on the web client. Okay, so I'm going to make a change here. As you can see, this is kind of busy in here. Lots of LIDAR, lots of points. I'm just going to quickly just go into Terrain, Survey Data Display Options, and I'm just saying do not draw any symbols. So when I do that, all those symbols for that LIDAR are gone. Looks a little cleaner. You can see where your line is. So what do I want to do after I've done that? Notice I've checked it out. So I own this project right now. No one else can, can check it out of the uh, out of the server. I own it for the changes. So I'm just going to hit save. All I did was change that survey data stuff. Now I'm going to go in, I'm going to check that project into the server now. Well, right here's my automatic revision tracking. Project saved, what happened? Survey data display options. And I went from do it went to do not draw symbols when it was draw symbols. So we're checking that. And then you can actually put a freeform comment up here. I can come in and say, Brandon turned off the symbols to make it clear. Something like that. I can assign milestone labels if you want to do that. Maybe you've got something like initial design, issue for construction. You can put all those milestone labels and see those in there. 
Uh, I can export reports to PLS Grid Map. So when I do that, it automatically checks all my structures and everything. So you get those structure overview reports, the usages. And I'm going to show you some of the usage stuff on the web client in a little bit. That's pretty cool. Uh, but this right here, this takes care of tracking those changes. I'm going to hit OK. So I went and checked it in. So it's removing my old project files and everything. And it's checking which files. You see how quick that was? That went right up to the server. It got done because really the only thing that changed was the setting on the, the project, that the, the drafting setting for the um, survey data display options. So that setting was saved. That's it. So we only uploaded the PPS file. That was the only difference. The way we do this is we do a file checksum. We make sure that the one file we can quickly compare with the checksums and make sure that it is the same file. Even if it has a different name, we would know that it is the same, that the internal uh, data in the file is the same. So we only stored that one, that one file. Okay, so we did that. Let's go back in. Let's look at this project reviewer again. Come in. Now I'm at revision number 26. So at revision number 26, Come in, there's that survey data display everything. And I come in, I turned off symbols to make it clear. Uh, so got everything we need to know here. Uh, it, if you notice, here's the, the revisions. Remember I mentioned the issue for construction as a milestone. So you see 13 was actually considered issued for construction in this example. So what, what I can do is, well, maybe I, maybe I want those symbols back. Maybe I did something more drastic than that. It's very easy to see the difference on the survey symbols. So let's say I want to revert back to the previous one. And I can revert back to any of these back through here. But let's just go back to the last one. There's 25. And I can say revert to this revision. Now remember, we were at revision 26. We're keeping track of all these. I'm going to go to 25. And I'm going to say I want to go back to that. So I'm going to revert back to that revision. Again, get that warning about those side profiles, no big deal. I'm just going to say uh, send them to that report window. All right, comment. Brandon messed up. Got to learn how to type. Brandon messed up. Had to turn on symbols again. So you can see this is just free form. Just type in what you want, hit OK. Now you see in the background here, that project that I had, you see now that all my symbols are back on again. I didn't go back in and visit anything. All I did was revert back. So I didn't visit the, the menu item or anything. I just went back. And now that 27 is in here. So I, I can look right here. There's the difference that happened again. I'm on 27. There's my comment. Everything's in there. So it's a very excellent way. It tracks all that stuff. It allows you to revert things back. allows you to get the information out of the project. Now right now I don't have this checked out. So I'm just going to hit OK. And I'm going to go out now with uh, the PLS Grid web app. So if you remember, this is what the grid view looked like. And this is the desktop app inside of PLS CAD. This is what it looks like. I've already got the the uh, the the browser open with PLS Grid. I've got a map here, very similar looking. A few extra little things, but very similar. As you can see, as I move around now, again, this is just a Chrome browser. I'm, I'm in here. I go down there. It's, up here at the top, there's that Verona Supplemental. Here's one up in uh, Sheboygan, I think. And then it, I even have some down here on the web app down in Kentucky right down here so I can go around and check those you can see all that same data is up in the upper upper right there I can then I can also zoom all the way in and you get the same similar view that you had on the desktop app all right I got the project if I click now look I can see planning profile sheets same thing that we did before that's all on there now again this is on just a web browser that's it. Nothing else. We don't have PLS CAD open or anything like that. I can go in KMZ file if I want to do that. I'm going to talk to you about grid analytics in just a minute because I'm going to jump back and do that. Uh, but uh, view location and maps. 
this is pretty cool so let's say you're out in the uh, out in the field and you're needing to go know how to get to structure 20 right here I click right there and I'm gonna say view location in maps click right there it's gonna go in it's gonna launch Google Maps it's gonna show you right where it is and if I need directions let's go from uh, work here and it's giving me driving directions straight to that structure. Now it's not going to give you driving directions down the right of way or anything, but it's going to get you pretty close and you're going to be able to hit that. So uh, pretty powerful little tool right there just if you're trying to navigate in an unfamiliar territory. All right, other things that are available with this when I'm clicking on that construction staking report. And again, remember this is all available on the desktop. We're still on the web. Construction staking report. Here's the construction staking report for that particular structure. You can see if I kind of zoom in, you got all the information. If you've got material assigned, you see this is a class 165 foot wood pole. Here's a TPH69G frame set. You get the views. All these staking reports and everything, all customizable by the user. All right. And we'll go back in. Let's go look again at. Uh, uh, the it, now this is kind of cool too. View structure. Okay, if I'm clicked on a structure, maybe I just want to see what it looks like. If I click that, I get a nice little kind of augmented reality view of this. That's pretty cool that you can kind of see that. So if they're in the field and they want to see what the structure looks like and everything, maybe they're doing a construction of it. They can go in and see this and. Very powerful just to get an idea of where things are. You can also see how wires are attached and everything. So great little feature. All right. Next thing down through here on this web, on the web app, uh, you know, bouncing around and everything. Remember we had some pictures on this structure? All available too. Here's my structure reference files. Come right over here. There's one of the structure reference files picture of it. So those are all available. This could be accessed right on your phone. No problem at all there. Okay, now this is where I kind of like this. We've got in here different layers that we can turn on. And one of those is view usage heat map. So if I turn that on, hit close, uh, kind of go over here and let's look at this one. When I do that, you can see I got yellows and reds and greens. Reds are structures that are failing. Hopefully your system doesn't have those. We kind of put some in so you could kind of see that. But you know, the cooler colors are less utilized. So, you know, very good way to see what how your system is currently. I've always thought maybe you could use this to kind of plan routes if you're doing an ADSS or maybe an OPGW change out. You could look at your system and you might be able to identify some extra capacity on certain, certain lines just to help with some routing of that. But right here, excellent thing though. You've got all that information right there on, in kind of a graphical format so you can get that and see it. I'm going to turn that off. Um, show thermal ratings heat map. So when you run this, I'm going to show you grid analytics in a minute. When I show thermal ratings map, I'm going to go in and you see each of my spans has a color. Now we kind of went with the red, bad, cooler colors, good. So you can see these are all good for 260 degrees. So when I click on that span, you can see there's every conductor, all phases, and what each one of those are rated at. So all those phases in that span are good for 260 degrees. Now, if I wanted to come down here and uh, click on this here and go to grid analytics, I'm gonna show you how to run this stuff too, but thermal rating, I wanna see my thermal rating. Boom, I hit that. This is the actual thermal rating report. It gives you all the information you ever wanna know on how we arrived at that rating. It's all down there, so you're good. To, you've got all the information you want right at your fingertips. Okay, next thing. Now, I, I really like this one, and this is where I, I, I like this quite a bit. Uh, when I come in here, I'm going to turn off that thermal rating. Show vegetation work sites. So, Peelis CAD has been doing vegetation management for well over 20 years. Well over 20 years. Um, 
So we do falling tree, we do the actual grow in, we take into account the blowout of the conductors, the change in the, the, the sag due to the heat up of, you know, more current going through. We do all that. So with this, you'd be able to go in and view these vegetation work sites. So what's a vegetation work site? These are areas that have been identified that should be cleared. Okay. So I'm going to kind of roll over here in this section. I know there's some over in there. And you can see these little red vegetation work sites, you know, and I'm going to just let put my bouncing, uh, my little rubber band from my mouse. And right over here, you'll see there's information about that work site, you know, center long lat, what station, uh, minimum clearance margin. You know, we kind of made a lot of these so that kind of stood out, uh, kind of made them fail. Uh, but it also tells you the area and even the uh, land area, so acres. So you'd be able to see that. Uh, you can uh, also go in and, and and view these things with with your phone. If you've got your GPS hooked up you on your phone and you've got to the location, you're going to be able to see exactly where you are on your phone in relation to these work sites on the web app. So if you're looking for it, you want to see if you're kind of standing in the middle of a work site, You'll be able to see that with your phone. All right. Other things. Uh, I'm kind of going to, I'm going to drop back to the desktop for just a second because we were talking about grid analytics, which was this thermal rating. Uh, we had the, the structure usage, uh, the veg sites, all that's in there. Well, if I jump right back here to this one back on the desktop and, and I'm going to go ahead and close that project so we don't see that. And I'm just going to come down here and show you a the grid analytics with this. So all I can, all I have to do, I can go to File, PLS Grid, Grid Analytics. We got a little warning here, just saying we're still developing it. So that's a good thing because we're just growing it and giving more capabilities. Now it gives me where do I want to draw a little box? Now I've kind of got a little. A little bit of this over here that overlaps between two projects and I, I kind of want to show this as being you can see I'm going to do some over here over into this other project so I'm going to click right there and it's popping up and saying what do you want to do now I don't have these projects open right now but it's going to say what do you want to do well I'm going to say I'm going to just do a structure usage hit OK comes in here's the report options what do i want to see for that report this is a similar type of report options you see in pls cat so i hit okay it's running it's running now of course the more you select the longer this may take but it's all being done it's all going in behind the scenes it's it's downloading these these uh projects it's running these reports everything's happening there so we're going to get that report out using just the grid. No, I still don't have that project open. It's still doing everything itself. So we kind of, it's going to take a second because it's probably downloading. I don't believe I had the one downloaded yet. So it's downloading that. You see I'm halfway done right now. Never goes as fast as you'd like it to. <laughs> All right, while that's running, I'm going to jump right back over to the PLS, uh, the, the PLS grid. Oh, nope, there we go. So now I've got my report. Again, I'm in PLS CAD with no project open, just my grid view. Here's the, the, the structures that were selected, the results. Uh, here's more on that. Here's the structures and such on this. So you get all this information without actually doing that. So you can go in. You could run your whole grid if you want. Now that might take a little while, but you know you're getting the right answer when you do that. You're getting an actual analysis done. So I'm gonna go ahead and just close out of that. So you can see, that's your PLS grid analytics. With those things, right now we've got thermal rating, we've got your um, uh, 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 danger tree, so your vegetation, and we've also got structure usage. Well, things may, we're going to be expanding that in the future. I'm sure there'll be some FERC 881 stuff that's going to go in. We've already got it in PLS CAT, so I'm sure it's going to find its way over into uh, PLS Grid, too. Uh, so you're going to have all that information available to you. All right. Now, uh, some things you can do that we want to bring up that's kind of about these revisions. When you come in here, 
you know, we got all sorts of, of the revisions I can go in and open in the reviewer in here and everything so you can see it. Things you can store on here, things to think about. Let's say you're doing multiple alignment options. Maybe you're just choosing your route and you want to have a few of them. You could have a revision for every one of your alignments that you're choosing. Then you could always go back. Once you find the one you want, you finally de designate that this is the route, then you just go in and do that same thing we did before. Revert to this revision and pick that route. You could call the milestones, route one, route two, route three, so you know this stuff just by looking at it. All right. Now, I know we're going fast and I'm trying to, I want to leave a lot of time here for some questions and stuff. I hope everybody has some. Uh, last thing I kind of want to go over with, uh, peel, with the web app. Go back in here. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. The vegetation work sites off. Uh, I want to go in and actually show you the user management portion of this. So if I come in right here and I click, there's my admin, right? What do I want to do? Okay, I'm going to go to user management first. Okay, now this is where we were talking about that access control list. You have control as the admin. So only the admin can set this stuff up. But here's all these users through here. So there I am. There's Mr. Chuck Norris here too. Uh, most of us, Macho Man Randy Savage is in here too. So we got all the users in here so you can go through and, and, and see who has access. And then right here, if I go to the settings, okay, it's going to allow me to select groups. If I come in here, I'm, we've made some groups. I'll show you where these are in a second too. Capital projects, client A, client B, maintenance projects, stuff like that. All that, you can set that in there and only allow that person access to those particular groups of projects. Uh, you can also say what kind of access should they have. Should we allow them read-only access? So you can pick particular projects. So you could check them all if you want. You want to give them read-write, so you can do that. Uh, down here, you can control the passwords and everything for everybody. So if you need to kick somebody off, you can change, get rid of their password, get rid of their user account. No problem. Privileges. So down here, we have different privileges. You got your admin, so only admins could change that all this they could only change project edition are you allowed to add a project edit milestones edit standards and get transmission project status report get your tps report so we put that in there that is the report that i was mentioning earlier that you can tell set up who gets those reports and then we can set up a timing of those too so it's tracking so you get a report of what changed on projects who did it everything all right, I'm going to hit there. Uh, there's the remove if you want to get rid of that person. So you can do that. Uh, okay, we, and we'll go back into the persons here. Project man, or group management. Come in here. If I want to add a new group, I could add one right here. Uh, just call it any name you want and create that group. No problem. Uh, the other thing in here, we've got project management. This is a list of all the projects. If you remember, we had that one Verona one. So if I come in, there's my Verona. So in that project, I can come in here and select all the project management information in here. Do I want to get the plan, plan and profile sheets? I can delete them off, KMZ file, and get rid of that. So this kind of helps you get that. I can actually remove it from the PLS grid map if I want. So it gives you a availability to do the project management. Uh, last few things in here, like your update is more of your server stuff, reports, you, you can get your reports out of here, your user access control list. This might be stuff that maybe your IT department would want. Uh, so you just get your report straight out of there. Um, maintenance, uh, that's just got more to do with your access logs on your server. And then up top home, we'll go on back here. It's just telling you more about the server. But if I want to get back to the map, just hit, hit my little button that my little button i'm right back out there there's my the, my map again and everything uh so i know that was quick but i hope you got a lot out of it and i'd really like to have some questions or even comments things you'd like to see in the future we've got we've got big plans for pls grid there's things we're wanting to do we're, we've thought about inspection in the future being able we had those work sites that we have for vegetation 
would be nice to track those and know when they're cleared so you'd have your inspector out there with their tablet or even their phone if they go out and inspect and see if a work site is cleared then you'd be able to upload that from your phone maybe we'll, we're also talking about being able to upload photos take maybe you're out in the field and all you got is your phone and you want to take some pictures of a, of a of a structure send it up to, up up to your server and then you'll be able to view it everyone will be able to view it at one time so uh, really powerful features that we're planning on for that should be available in the future uh, but right now let's just kind of open things up for questions and see where we go from here thanks